In the previous videos, we look at the basic examples on what is AM, what is FM, and how to do basic calculations. Now we're going to compare them side by side a little bit more and see what are the pros and cons, what are the differences and similarities of both of these waves. So, AM, FM. Uh, the first difference, of course, is what are you changing? The first one, AM, you are varying amplitude. For FM, you are varying frequency. That's the main thing. Okay, so let's go on and fill in the other things that we have not filled in yet. All right, let's first look at the transmission of AM versus FM. So right up here, I'm going to call this the transmission. So AM signals, the way they are sent are, is quite interesting. AM signals are reflected back to Earth from what we call the ionosphere layer in the sky. Ionosphere. Our Earth got many layers, okay, when you go up, and it's reflected back. And they have a large range of coverage because it can be reflected. One transmitter, oh, you put one transmitter like that. Wow, it can cover a very large area because it bounce here, bounce there. I'll show you a picture later. Uh, FM, on the other hand, at higher frequency, much higher than AM. And so these FM signals actually just cut through the ionosphere and don't get reflected. So they just pass through. So FM cannot have a very large coverage. Ah. It's around 30 km or less uh, and also only by line of sight. Line of sight. If you want to cover a big area, you need many, many transmitters. Ah. So put one here, you put one here. Oh, ah, here got mountain, you put another one. So aerials everywhere. AM, you put one, you can send it to the other side of the world if you position it properly. Very high power. So here's the idea of how you can compare both FM and AM. So we have a planet Earth down here. We are human here. Ionosphere is a layer in the atmosphere, the, a very high layer. So if you have an aerial in this tiny position here, your FM signal is just going to fly right through the ionosphere and then escape. So like that, long, out, long. If I see you, I see you. If I don't see you, I cannot. But look what the AM signal does. Let's call this the the the, the uh, purple color one. You see the AM? It's going to do some bouncing, bouncing, reflection. Come here, go there. So actually, you can reflect, reflect, reflect all the way to the other side of the Earth. <laughs> it transmits very, very far. That's the difference between, uh, okay? FM cuts through, doesn't bounce here, bounce there. AM can bounce here, bounce there, and then go very large range. Uh, what else? What else? This is interesting. Okay, transmission. What else can we compare here? Bandwidth. Ah, yes, we talk about bandwidth. So, bandwidth of AM is 9 kilohertz. Very narrow. And we learned earlier that half of the bandwidth is your broadcast frequency. How much you can send as your signal. So, half of 9 is 4.5. So it's okay for speech that you talk, you hear my voice a bit distorted, it's okay. But maybe for things like music, not so okay. Because it lacks quality. So there is a lack of quality because the bandwidth is quite small. Uh, especially for music. So talking, can. music, no. But in comparison to FM, you can you see? AM bandwidth is very small. FM bandwidth is very big. That's a maximum frequency that can be sent uh, about 15 kilohertz. Pretty good. 15 kilohertz range is about the human hearing range. Ah. Human hearing range. So quite okay. Ah. You can hear music, the full power of music. And this is higher sound quality for music. Let's go and take a peek at how this FM might look like in real life. Here's a software I can use to scan the radio waves in the air, electromagnetic waves. I set up my little radio receiver. So what we can see here is a tiny little spike. There's not much here. There's no, no information. You can hear it. Like it's just noise. Nothing. Okay. So there's nothing particular here. But if I go and scan a little further, maybe... Hmm. Ooh, why is this spike here? Got sound. Ah. Let me listen and see. Nothing much also. Okay, never mind. We continue going. We scan further. We go up and up. Oh, yo, yo. What is this mountain? Look at these. Just now we saw were just tiny spikes. Like this. this is called a very small bandwidth. 
it's, it's so small, okay? Uh, I don't know if there's some information here, but, well, who knows? Someday I might listen to aliens. But look at this. Do you know what this is? This is FM, and it's way bigger. Like, I can scan, and I'll see this very, very big mountain here. Wow. You see this? This is what we call a large bandwidth. This bandwidth is about 200 kilohertz. You can see my mouse there. Okay, I can go a bit bigger, but it's about 200. Let's see how it sounds like. How about this one? That sounds like K-pop. Next one. Pretty interesting. So notice how all these mountains are way bigger than all those tiny tiny spikes. Those are AM. If I can find it, I couldn't find any tonight. But FM is much bigger bandwidth, much bigger mountains. And you see they don't overlap one. Ah. This one is all the frequencies, a certain bandwidth for this particular radio station. I think we keep standing uh, mountain. This one, another station. What is this? Not very sure what that is. Very noisy, eh? Okay, next. Wow, many, many mountains. Pretty interesting. Okay, anyway, I'll get carried away looking at radios. But this is the idea of frequency band. We see all these mountains and you notice they don't overlap. Each radio station have their own mountain, you can call it lah. Their own uh, range of frequencies, their own bandwidth, and it's very clear cut. You know, for this radio station, you go to this frequency, which is about 95.3 megahertz. Mm. Now that idea leads me to the next point. Let's look at this point. Smaller bandwidth. So if your bandwidth is very small, you're just like a tiny little spike, oh, then you can put many spikes, ah, this one station, ah, this another station, another station, so that you can accommodate more stations. But if you have a greater bandwidth, hmm, you might not be able to fit in so many stations in that certain frequency range. Ah. But you have better sound quality though. So we can say here that it's a better sound quality. Pretty good. You can hear music. It's not distorted too much. It's not like terrible. Okay, so remember uh, if you have very narrow, you can fit quite a lot of frequency. But if you are a mountain, uh, you fit one mountain in this range full already. One station just for that area. Okay, and also because FM sending much more information. So it's like a fat mountain with a very large bandwidth. Okay, so other things that you want to compare between AM and FM. Okay, now we're just comparing pros and cons of each one. AM is modulated by amplitude. So yeah, you have interference from noise. Lots of lots of noise. If you ever hear AM AM channel in the car, it's just very noisy. And this noise we define as what we call some random unwanted signal. I don't know from where, alien, uh, where. Just come in and disturb. Whereas uh, FM signals, modulated by frequency, is not so uh, easily interfered with noise from surrounding. So it higher sound quality. Like just now we heard the music. Quite okay, uh, I can recognize the song. Okay, uh, pretty good. So pros and cons, noise, AM and FM. Next, transmission. AM transmitters are quite easy to build. If you ever get stranded on an island, using a wire, you need some electricity, you should be able to send a SOS and help distress call. Help, send help. Uh, it is, you can build it. Lah. It's cheaper to broadcast and also receive. FM, ooh, very expensive, very complicated. Your machine is very complicated. Uh, some diagram, I have a diagram here somewhere. I think I posted. Ah, yes. These are just receiver circuits. One for AM on the left, one for FM on the right. We won't be learning about the circuits, but you can look at it. You'll recognize some components in here. Maybe one day you could make your own receiver circuit if you have the time and interest to do so. But anyway, go and Google if you're interested to know more. Uh, next, okay, so one is cheap, one is more expensive. Know the pros and cons, cheap and expensive. Uh, lastly, AM need high power to send. FM don't need high power because AM, uh, you are changing amplitude, you know. 
and amplitude is in terms of voltage. You need to change a very large range of voltage, whereas frequency, you are just changing frequency. Don't really need to change the voltage per se, not too much compared to M uh, A amplitude frequency modulation. Eh, amplitude frequency, AM signal. Okay, so that's comparing these two ways. Make sure you know how to differentiate both of them. Some of these points, you can use them in past years when answering pros and cons kind of question. Um, describe the benefits of AM. Describe the benefits of FM. All right. Now to close off the section, just want to elaborate a little bit more on the transmission of waves. Just now we mentioned this thing. FM, you penetrate, go out ionosphere. Liao. AM, you bounce here, bounce there, and you can go pretty far. Now there are names for these kind of wave propagations. The first one, let's hmm, let's look at this one. The first one we can call it a ah what we what we learned just now the bounce here, bounce there. This one is called a sky wave. Now this wave will travel in the ionosphere in straight lines and then it reflects back and forth, back and forth and go really, really far. Worldwide, you can send an AM signal. Of course, it'll be very distorted, very weak, but you can send a signal. But this ionospheric reflection uh, way of propagating uh, is kind of unreliable due to varying thickness of ionosphere. Some place thicker, some place thinner, your reflection also a bit strange, hard to predict. So different thickness, different height, and different density of your ionosphere. And of course, narrow bandwidth usually is AM. Lah. Very small spike, not much information, very low frequency, your voice will be a bit distorted. And of course, your coverage is limited and quite poor in hilly areas. Got mountain here, mountain there, it's going to be very bad signal. So that's what we call a sky wave. Where's our diagram? Ah, sky wave, there we are. Bounce here, bounce there from transmitter to receiver. Although you don't have line of sight. Line of sight means like this. Oh. Can you see the, the receiving tower? Cannot. But it's okay. We can bounce. Sky waves can bounce. The other wave we can talk about is ground wave down here. So this is called ground. Or sometimes some books will call it surface wave. So as you can guess, it travels close to the surface. And... Is very long wavelength so it can diffract and bend around the earth a little bit but up to 100 km lah, so it's not as long as worldwide cannot worldwide lah. so um, that's our ground wave and in the diagram here it looks something like the one down there ground wave so you kind of bend maybe a little bit here then no more already it will diffract lah. it's curve it travels in a curve path and that one has the longest frequency compared to sky wave Lastly, the one that is not in the diagram, what cuts through the ionosphere is what we call a space wave. Ooh. So a space wave can pass through the ionosphere, usually used to communicate with satellites, satellite TV or other GPS kind of thing. And there will be a line of sight, there must be a line of sight between transmitter and receiver. There's no bouncing here and there. So in the diagram, if you want to add a space wave to it, Maybe I will have to draw a satellite in outer space. Beep, 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 beep. So I'm going to send my... Wow, this is going to be a bit hard to draw. Let me try. Okay, I think I got it. So this one... Oops, I erased it. This is going to be our space wave. Send to outer space. And you can cut through the ionosphere, no problem. Very high frequency also. And what the satellite will usually do is... Uh, it will help to reroute the signal and send it back to the receiver. Looking something like this. Okay, so space wave up, space wave down. And you must have a direct line of sight between your transmitter and satellite or between satellite and receiver. Direct line of sight. Uh. You must be able to see, only you can send the signal. Because it doesn't bounce, doesn't reflect. So comparing these three, um, FM is kind of a little bit like a space wave, kind of. Cuts right, very high frequency, goes right out into space, outer space. Sky wave is a little bit more like AM, bounce here and there. And if you want to write down the frequency ranges for each of them, let's do that. So space wave is going to be the highest frequency, frequency range is going to be 
more than 30 megahertz. Sky wave, kind of like AM range, so that'll be about between 3 uh, and 30 megahertz, somewhere in that range. And the ground surface wave is lower than 3. Lah. So you can see less than 3, somewhere there. Megahertz. Walkie talkie and things like that. All the ground surface wave. Lah. Uh, or other kinds, many, many different kinds, submarines and things like that. Okay, so different types of wave, just know when you see the terms, uh, then you are familiar with that. So remember just now we look at the scanning thing, right? We scan some of the radio frequency station. Actually, there's a whole range of frequencies. Because if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, radio wave is actually a very, very big range. Look at this. Radio. Infrared. Visible. So small. What we see is just a tiny section of what is there in around us. Ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma ray. Radio is so big. It has its own section that people give names to from VLF, LF. What is all this up to infrared? So these one, uh, you don't need to exactly memorize all of them, but it's just interesting to know the range. People start off with this tree, low frequency, medium, and high. So between 30 kilohertz, 30 megahertz. So kind of like 30 kilohertz is about ground wave, sky wave, space wave, somewhere there. Okay, so we start off with AM. Ah, AM radio, R fit for the car. Medium frequency, also AM. High frequency, also AM. But eventually, as we get more and more technologically advanced, we say, hey, actually, we can go lower frequency, right? Okay, law. So low frequency, what is lower than that? <laughs> People are so creative in naming things. They call this very low frequency. Let's go lower. Okay. So this one is about 3K, 30K. Pretty long wavelength, 10 kilometer for one complete cycle. Wow. And it's for navigation, ah, monitor, kind of thing. Okay. Go lower can ah, can. What do we call this? Ultra ultra low frequency. Mm, this should be LF la ULF. <laughs> what we use that frequency range for is specifically dedicated for submarines, mines, telephone, all this kind of thing. Go lower some more, we call it super low frequency submarines communicate all submarine they basically extremely low frequency is the smallest extremely low frequency such creative names mm. all right anyway what if we go higher than our am what is above am Ooh, lots of things vhf very high frequency i'm just gonna write very high ah. Uh, in this range is going to be our favorite FM where we hear our radio station, our music. Aircraft, aeroplane come in. Calling control tower approaching the airport. Are we clear for landing? Yes, you are clear for landing. Please land. So the uh, aeroplane will talk with the airport. TV also around this range. Then you go higher. It's ultra high. Ultra high range. Microwave, wireless, Bluetooth, GPS is all in this range. So your phone probably got a lot of this. I uh, draw Wi-Fi. Bluetooth, how to draw? Uh, like that. Uh. Uh, I think I drew it correctly. GPS is like this, I think. So all these signals that your phone especially receive in the ultra high range. SHF, super high. What is in the super high frequency? 3G to 10, 30G, eh? 3G, look very familiar. 3G phone, ah, miss. Yes, 3G phone signal. Your phone, your Maxis, DG, Cellcom, U Mobile, whatever you use. Kind of in this range already. So your TV, microwave, ah, communication, satellite, radar, wireless, all inside here already. Lah. Go higher some more, extremely high. This one, remote sensing. Ooh, wireless, more Wi-Fi. Go higher some more, tremendously high. <laughs> I have nothing to say about the naming convention. Sure, it's convenient. 300 giga. It's kind of like this one. You don't experience it in daily life because you're kind of going into another frequency range already. 300 gigahertz. Oh, what is this? 0 0.1 millimeter. So somewhere here. Kind of in X-ray, UV, gamma range already. So, I mean, you could go there, but it's not exactly called radio anymore. So this whole thing is a whole range, just 
interesting to know the different ranges. Know that radio is a very, very large range. But we will be dealing in past years mainly with AM, which is a highlighted section, and also a bit of FM, which is in the very high frequency range. So that's all for this section on modulation. I will see you in the next section.